Hello everyone! In this video we are going to cover um, some of the basic uh, illustrator tools necessary for CAD or vector design. Um, these are some of the frequent shortcuts that we went over in the previous video. However, now we are going to focus on some of the essential tools. Next I would like to go over how to use the type tool as well as the erase tool and how to group and ungroup. The type tool can be found in the tools bar menu right here on the left hand side and the shortcut for it is the letter T. So if you just click on it, the best way to type in Illustrator is to form a bounding box, something like this, you can just click and drag. It will probably fill in with a placeholder text which you can just um, delete by using the delete key. To make any additional alterations, go ahead and select the text and make your way to the character panel up here at the top. And you can choose to uh, change the font, you can change the spacing and you know you can apply it all kinds of different um, alterations. You can change the paragraph right next to the character panel. Another interesting uh, feature from the text tool is to type on a path. Um, the best way I can illustrate that is by choosing an object. Let's say I'm going to go ahead and choose the ellipse. Once you have a shape selected or a line under which you'd like to type, you are going to make your way to the type tool. Put in a text around the shape that you have selected. To use the eraser tool, you can select the object so you don't have to. You can simply make your way to the eraser tool and start erasing, like so. This was a one object, now these two or two objects. If you double click on the eraser, you can um, choose the angle, you can choose the roundness, um, you can also choose the size of the brush, you know, how big you wanted it to be. And the last tool I'd like to show you is the ungroup tool. So, as you can see, I'm going to zoom in a little bit here too. As you can see, this is a neckline with a zipper. And if I just click on anything, it will basically take it apart. So this will happen quite a bit whenever you're making, whenever you're working on your projects. Uh, to prevent that, I'm going to Control Z to undo that. To prevent that, you are simply going to uh, take the black arrow key and marquee select all the areas that you'd like to um, group or you can also hold the shift key like so and you can individually select specific areas you'd like to um, group together and to group an object together or several different objects together go ahead and select it right click and group so now if I want to try to move this or even just the zipper it doesn't matter where I click the entire objects will move together. If I decide that I want to work a little bit more on each individual uh, shape, I'm going to right click and ungroup. That will allow me to again take it apart. Next we're going to talk about Pathfinder. Uh, Pathfinder along with some other tools such as the pin tool and the anchor point tools are probably one of the most important ones we're going to be using in, in throughout this course. Um, they really give you a lot of flexibility and I want to show you around how they really work. You can find the Pathfinder tool from the Windows drop-down on here or it's also embedded in the panel dock on the right hand side down here. As you can see Pathfinder has 10 different options down here. You're welcome to explore all of them. However, we're going to focus on three major ones, which is Pathfinder Unite, this first box right here, then Pathfinder Exclude, and Pathfinder Divide. So what Pathfinder Unite really does, it uh, essentially unites all of the shapes together. So what I did here, I took a bunch of uh, rounded rectangles and I just put them on top of each other because I wanted to get a shape that was solid such as this one. So let's go ahead and try Pathfinder Unite. Make your way down here to the Pathfinder uh, panel dock. Go ahead and select the Pathfinder Unite node and that will unite all of the shapes together into one single option. So the second one is called Pathfinder Exclude. It is this last one on the top row. 
and if you select, if you get your black arrow and you select your objects which are on top of each other um, and you click on it, what it does, it essentially punches holes. Um, so this is a really good tool for when you're trying to, you know, make zippers or buttons or make a custom border uh, for a visual merchandising planogram. Um, so it's very useful to, to deal with this. So what I have here is an object. It can be any kind of object. It can be just a rectangle. It can be a circle. Um, and in my case, what I have is uh, just a, a, the front side of a t-shirt with a line across from it uh, to identify and tell Pathfinder where I'd like to divide it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select both of them, the shape and the line across, and I'm going to go ahead and click on divide. So if I keep it selected and if I right click and choose to ungroup, separate them, I should be able to have two separate portions of this particular object. So now I can go ahead and color in with two different colors. Um, that's one way to do it. So these are the three pathfinders that I think are really important to understand. Um, however, in Illustrator there is another tool that is really interesting to work with um, that is very similar to Pathfinder um, and it's kind of like Pathfinder on steroids if you will. Um, it's called a Shape Builder tool and it can be located on the left hand side in the toolbar menu. From the Shape Builder tool I'd like to focus on three major areas which is Shape Builder Unite, Shape Builder Divide and Shape Builder Delete. To show you how Shape Builder works I'm going to go ahead and, and take the black arrow, select the objects I'm interested in working with and I'm going to go ahead and make my way to the Shape Builder tool, click on it and as you can see when I hover over my object which in this case is a shirt design, I can choose to combine certain parts or I can choose to combine uh, all the parts. So in this case, if I click and drag, it will outline it in red, which means that those two areas are active and they will be united together. So if I click and drag and then I release, those two areas are going to be united and then automatically filled in with the whichever color is selected. You can of course change that later on. If it doesn't automatically change from the uh, control panel, you can simply drag the color from the toolbar menu and just drop it on top of the um, object you're interested in coloring in. By the way, you see how it's not giving you the option to uh, divide or unite all of the options, just give you one little area. If this ever happens and it's not allowing you to divide or work with all the different parts of the object, you can make your way up here to the top of the menu bar under the object and you can just simply click to expand. What that does is um, allows you to expand upon the object, expand upon the field, the stroke, and other um, different options. So just go ahead and click OK, and now you're able to uh, divide or unite however you wish. So the difference here between the Shape Builder Unite and Shape Builder Divide is Shape Builder Unite, if you click and hover over a different part, it will unite both of those options. Here, on the other hand, if you just click on one of the areas, and do not hover or hold and drag, it will just divide those areas. So for instance, I'd like to color in each one of these uh, differently. I'm going to click on each one of them like so. Change the color. And color like that. So basically, all of them are now different and they're all divided. And the Shape Builder Delete um, is similar to Exclude. What it does, it allows you to exclude or delete a certain um, area of the object that you're not interested in. So what I'm going to do is um, select the object and I'm going to make my way to the Shape Builder tool. 
and in order for me to delete anything I'm going to hold the option or the alt key if you're in a Windows and as you can see it automatically gives me the arrow with the minus sign on it which means that it is going to delete that portion it's going to exclude it from the um, entire object like so something else I'd like to point out um, that is also located under the shape builder tool is the life frame bucket you're going to love working with the life frame bucket what it basically does it gives you the option to uh, just select whatever color you'd like to work with and then um, just once you make your way to the selected selected object you can decide or you can uh, choose to color in uh, however you like as you can see uh, the entire object is selected with red which means that when I drop this color it's going to um, apply it immediately if it ever it is not allowing you to color in um, you can simply click on the expand button up here in the control panel or you can find that same button um, in the objects menu right here and it will allow you to further break down the object and work with it